Hey everyone, Romy here, and have you ever wondered who's actually connected to your home Wi-Fi right now? What, your phone? Your laptop? Sure. But what about that random device that you don't recognize? Is it your neighbor stealing your Wi-Fi, or did someone hack into your network? Mm hmm? Well, today, I'm going to show you how to turn your Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 into a network security guard that monitors every device that connects to your Wi-Fi. We're setting up Pi Alert. And trust me, you'll be shocked when you see how many devices are actually on your network. And the best part, this is super easy, even if you're a complete beginner. So grab your Raspberry Pi and let's get started. Okay, so what exactly is Pi Alert? Think of it like a security camera, but for your Wi-Fi network. It constantly scans your network and shows you every single device that's connected. Phones, laptops, smart TVs, those rare IoT devices you forgot you even had. You get this really clean web dashboard where you can see everything in real time. You can name your devices, set up alerts, and track your devices which are connected and disconnected. So when your kids say, they're doing homework, but their gaming console suddenly appears online. Yeah, you'll know. But seriously, this is great for network security. If someone unauthorized is on your Wi-Fi, you'll see it immediately. Before we dive in, here's what you need first. Obviously, a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5 any RAM size works, but I'd recommend at least a 2GB if you have it. You'll also need Raspberry Pi OS already installed on your SD card. If you haven't done that yet, you can download the Pi Imager, connect your SD card to your computer or whatever device you have, and you can run the installer there. If you need a video on how to do so, I'm pretty sure there's a lot on YouTube, but if you need me to cover one, I have no problem doing so. Let me know below. And for network connection, Ethernet is definitely preferred because it's more reliable for scanning, but Wi-Fi will work too if that's all you've got. And that's it. Oh wait, no it's not. And about 15 to 20 minutes of your time, this is way easier than you might think. Now I'm going to connect to my Pi and you can follow through with all the commands that I enter. Let's get into it. All right, so first, let's make sure everything is up to date on our Pi. Now you can follow through and enter the same commands that I'm entering here. Now this may take a minute or two, depending on if you've ever updated any software or any of the dependencies on your Pi. For me, I normally keep mine up to date, so it may not take as long as it does for you. Now, We'll install everything PyAlert needs to work. This command is a bit long, so again, I'll try my best to leave it on screen or I'll link it to the GitHub. You guys can go ahead and grab all the commands from there. And this part may take around five to ten minutes i'll speed up my video but for you it may take a bit longer because it's installing everything that's required for pi alert to work and that's normal wait until you see the command prompt again all right now that's done let's download pi alert from the internet here's the commands follow along and if you see Faithful Destination Path PyAlert already exists, that means PyAlert is already there. That's okay. We can just skip on. Go ahead.
Now after this is complete, we have to also give PyAlert permission to access the files it needs. And you can go ahead again with the commands I'm typing in here. These commands, just to note, they won't show any output. So if you just get your command prompt, that means it worked. If it shows any output, then something went wrong. All right, and now we're going to run the installer. Now this is important. This is where those confusing questions appear, but don't worry, I'll tell you exactly what to answer. So when it asks you to install PyHole, up to you, but for this video, this purpose, we are skipping PyHole to keep it simple. So I select no. You're going to say no again. You may see it one for email notifications. Again, I'm skipping that because I'm not going to go through the entire setup as it relates to setting up your Gmail and that server. So I'm skipping that as well. No SMTP setting. No dynamic DNS IP, I select no as well. You just press OK and you go ahead and you start your installation. Now after all that is completed, PyAlert needs special permission to scan your network. Now this is the trickiest part, but follow along carefully. Go ahead and run this command, and this will open a text editor. It looks scary, but that's okay. Follow these steps. Now you're going to use the arrow keys to scroll down to the very bottom of the line, and you'll see insert at the bottom, or you can just scroll all the way to the bottom using your arrow keys. You press enter to make a new line and you type this exactly or you can copy and paste it from the file in GitHub. You press the escape key after typing it in and type colon wq and press enter. Yes, include the colon. If you mess up, you press escape then type colon q and the exclamation mark Press enter to exit without saving anything. Then you can run the command again and start over. You will also need to know the IP address for your Pi. And for you to access the web interface, this is gonna be important. So you run this command here to see your IP address. You should see something similar to 192.168.1 and whatever your IP address is. Make sure you have it written down cause you'll need it for the next step. And now, for the exciting part, you can access the dashboard and see PyAlert working. Open the web browser on your computer or your phone as long as it's connected to the same network. And in the address bar, you type your Pi IP address forward slash PyAlert forward slash or just follow exactly what I have here. Replace your Pi IP with whatever is you found when you typed the command to see your IP address. And that's it. You should see PyAlert, your dashboard, and it may take a minute or two for the first scan to complete and show you your devices. Now, if you want to run your first scan manually, you can go ahead and enter this command right now, and this will scan your network immediately.
you'll see a bunch of output that's good. Wait for it to finish and you'll see the command prompt again. Now, after you see the command prompt, you can refresh your web browser and you should see all the devices on your network. And that's it. You just set up Pi Alert on your Raspberry Pi. Now you can monitor your network. Now, just a hint. If you want to be able to manage or view your, your network while you're away from home, you can download and install Tailscale VPN on your Raspberry Pi and install it on your phone, connect it, and you can access that IP address from Tailscale when your phone is connected to that Tailscale address as well, from anywhere in the world, as long as you have Tailscale VPN on. And there you go. If you guys learned anything from this video, drop a like drop a comment tell me what you'd like to see in the next video and i appreciate you guys taking the time to learn this with me because this is also the first time for me setting it up and i'll see you guys in the next one take care and have a good one and make sure to go break some stuff and fix it all over again so you can learn that's the only way to move forward